Okay, so uh, now I'm going to start before the break, take about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, uh, and just give you a, a, a gentle introduction into things. Now, as Tom mentioned, uh, one of the things that we try to do is to make uh, material available so that uh, on the, or linked from the, uh, from the uh, program, on the conference webpage, uh, you'll find uh, the slides that I'm showing you. They're not exactly the same, but the changes are minimal. You'll find a script and data in a zip file. You'll find uh, a, uh, a small uh, R script called uh, called install packages and a list of packages needed to reproduce the uh, the um, the um, results that I'll be showing you. Now, you might think that all of this. A bit like me fiddling with the cable for the mic is 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 overdone. Uh, Edsa and uh, Daniel and Daniel Nust and I have published in EOS Transactions a small note, and there's more work going on on reprodu reproducible geospatial uh, analysis. Now, if we consider that science matters, then some of the principles of scientific methodology actually matter, and so with a big M uh, underscore, and one of these is that none of us are perfect. Uh, those of us who write software know that better than anybody else, so we're always making mistakes, and luckily there are users who find them, well, if, especially in open source, because then the users get back to you and say, well, hey, this doesn't work, why not? And, and so you say, well, actually I was having a, 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 a bad day, and I forgot about that, so I, the, 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 the corrected version will be published within minutes. And it quite often is, so that you find in open source communities that things get fixed fairly quickly, even though some of, some of the errors might be, available, might be avoidable. When we're working as scientists, we perhaps are sitting alone or in a small work group. We, we don't interact with larger communities of other people, and our view of uh, the way in which the analysis could be carried out or the way in which we prepare the data is very often based on our own experience, partly on a, a reading of that literature that we know, and in the case of doctoral students, is driven also by the, uh, by the um, uh, desires and preferences of your supervisor, which may or may not be a good thing, but being part of a community which, which provides you with input from other directions gives you a chance to, in surveying terms, triangulate, to find out whether what you're doing seems to be a robust and responsible way of doing it. But even if one has done things in that way, it may all be a sorry story. And... As, as far as our own careers are concerned, well, that's tough, but we would prefer not to advertise it, but it happens, so that we can do something in, in believing that we're doing a really good job and delivering the results that we should, but unless someone else can take our code and our data set and go through that and see whether we're not making false assumptions, then it's difficult to move forward, so that science is dependent on... Uh, intersubjective objectivity. It's not that we're objective, it's that someone else can check out what we've done. Now, if we believe that that's the way science should be organized, we should then make our scripts and data available, hence, hence this guy. Okay, so that's why it's there. It's, it's not because I've got this thing about uh, whatever. It's because it's based on uh, a fundamental reading of scientific methodology. That if we if we really mean that science should be based on the assumption that no single scientist is objective, but that scientists, because they can check out, peer review, what's being done in their area, rely on other people's insights, then we can move forward. So that that that's, that's one of the reasons why Geostat or why these why these uh, meetings are playing a, a, a useful role. It'll be some time before we get to reproducibility, but the pressure uh, in open science or the open science movement towards reproducibility is there. It's not quite the same as open access. Open access is also helpful, but open access doesn't have to be reproducible in the same way that closed access can be reproducible, so that the two are orthogonal to each other, and some uh, commercial publishers do provide good resources for, 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 for reproductive research. 
of reproducible research. So that's why that's there. And uh, despite what Tom said, then if you want to run my script on my data while I'm talking, then if that suits your style of learning, that's great. Uh, I'd also like to say that, that uh, we hope that you'll check out your uh, um, internet wireless access during the day so that we get things fixed. Uh, and if you're in real difficulties and don't understand anything, the guy to talk to is Truk in, in the back there, because he's, he, he, knows how to, he knows how to sort these things out. He's helped me on previous doctoral courses, admittedly with fewer people here, but usually, usually you find a solution. Sometimes there's no solution. If you don't have a computer with a wireless antenna, then, then you really can't connect. So, th so the, the, there are things which are hard, determined by hardware. But, but we will try to get you up and running during the day today and try and do this during the lunch breaks, du during the coffee breaks. Try out your wireless if your wireless isn't giving you uh, satisfaction. Those of you who have EduRome should be up and running already. Those of you who don't need to find out how to do it on the 12-hour um, tech, uh, SMS um, text message logins, it should work okay. But if it isn't, we, we're trying to get it settled today because tomorrow you'll need to be you'll need to be up and running. Good. So, what would I like to tell you about uh, about uh, representing and handling spatial and temporal temp, spatial temporal data in R? Well, I think the main thing to tell you. And what I'm going to start by doing is that there's no single answer. Almost all uh, researchers have their own ways of collecting data, uh, organizing data. And what we are offering, or what I'll be describing after the coffee break, is one cut on representation, but it's not necessarily the only cut. And that this is a, uh, a discussion uh, which will develop. Uh, so that we're, when we tell you there's a story, this is the story in, in the book that uh, Edsa and Vitilio and I wrote and that Barry contributed to in an early phase. This is the, the, these are things which, which do change. The, the data sets that we were looking at 10 years ago were smaller, they're now much larger. And things like th <laughs> So things change uh, and one, 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 one achieves more insight as time goes on. However, uh, there are reasons for thinking carefully. So one of them is that if one, is, if one tries to be explicit about using spatial data, and I don't think there are, there are many participants here who would describe themselves as being geoinformatics or coming from geoinformatics. Is there anybody who would describe... Well, I mean, you're a small minority, right? But almost everybody else isn't. So that the professionals if you like, the, those who study the representation of data are underrepresented here. I'm not from there either, so I'm a, just a geographer. So the, the th kinds of things that we do is that we, 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 we take the data we've got and we sort of rush towards analysis, but actually thinking through the ways in which the data are represented can, uh, can, can be very helpful. Handling spatial data is never easy, in quotation marks, because when you make representational choices, they particularly, uh, they particularly, well, there's, there's a quote from, from John Tukey, who is one of the statisticians who, who supported Bell Laboratories, which is where R comes from. Uh, he, 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 he has a, he has a, a comment that the, 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 the overwhelming desire to test a hypothesis doesn't necessarily mean you can do it successfully from the data you have. There's a process of going through from the data collection to making sure that everything has been checked out all the way through. And very often we're in the situation that we've collected data using protocols which are usual in, within our, our disciplines, but going on beyond that it may, be, may be harder. So that thinking about the inferential outcomes, as if we're using statistical methods, if we think about the inferential outcomes, we don't want to go get there too quickly because we might find that uh, the bases for the inferential outcomes are not adequate. So that one of the things that we've seen, for instance, in, 
in, in uh, interpolation is uh, whether you should carry through the uncertainty associated with fitting the variogram model. And you'll find out more about this from, from Ben on, on, on Thursday. Should you do that or not? When you fit a variogram model, you're fitting a, a parametric model to the influence of space on the data. But should you just take that as fixed and plug it in to do your predictions, or should you carry the uncertainty through? So this was, this was research done in, in Lancaster from almost 20 years ago to try to carry through the uncertainty that's then called model-based model -based geostatistics. And, and some of these things affect uh, other areas as well. In, in uh, epidemiology, one is very often dealing with aerial units, and the aerial units probably are administrative or they're a health district or something. And maybe if you chopped up the data in a different way, you'd get a different result. So that rushing to inferential outcomes because they're what we need to publish or what we need to complete our theses, we may, may go too fast. So having to think explicitly about the use of the data means that we may open our minds up to more, uh, more sources of, uh, of uncertainty. Being close to the data is something which is natural for geographers like me, but I try to suggest that it's natural uh, for, for, for everybody. Being close to code is also um, significant and Im important. And returning to the work on, on reproducible research, publishing within 10 years, publishing is not going to be enough in itself. Um, we actually need to be able to d demonstrate that uh, how our conclusions were reached. Uh, so that, that's, that's where I'm starting from. And I'm going to give you a, a motivational example which will take, take us through to the, to the coffee break. Uh, the um, uh, the uh, uh, screenshots uh, are not too legible. Uh, if you download the, download the PDF, you can, you can expand them to see where it's going on. But I'll talk you through. Uh, about, as almost exactly, uh, um, I think this is the 14th of June, uh, 2013, this appeared on the BBC News website. So this is, this is cut out from the BBC News website. And it says, early deaths, regional variations are shocking. And it's a statement made by the Minister of Health. So that then there's a map with lots of green colours, which presumably are the good places to live, and the red, red colours, which are the bad, dangerous places to live. And early deaths, what do they mean by early deaths? When you read the text, it's, it's uh, more deaths for people aged under 75 than you would expect. So that they're deaths for people. You would expect people to live in England until they're 75. S many live much more. But there are some areas where if you're a, a man of my age, then you've only got another, I don't know, five, ten years. So, uh, and, and, and if I lived in a green area, then I'm looking at 25 years. So what, what's the difference? What's making the difference? Some places, people die earlier. This is not divided by sex, so it's not divided between men and women, which you could also say was, is relevant. So that they're just making, making, making a picture indicating that some local authorities have a, 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 a big job to do to raise the uh, life expectancy of their inhabitants. And the minister says that the picture is shocking. And when you look at the picture, you see, yep, it, there's, there's green over quite a lot of the country. This is from the website. This is, this is an interactive map, so you can zoom in and click on where you live, and, and it will tell you how... So it sort of has a... It, well, it doesn't have a clock, but you can Im imagine people using it and say, oh, oh. So, so I, I won't buy another pizza. I won't have time to eat it. <laughs> so that this, my, my clock's run out. But it's not quite like that, but it's, it's quite in your face. It's, quite, it's, quite, it's, it, it's, 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 it's simplifying a story. But what, what, in fact, is the story here? <laughs> now, Public Health England, who published the data, are quite good about this, because they have tabs at the top, and one of them is about the data. So it describes where the data is coming from, and there's a spreadsheet so you can download it. And they're, they're, they're very open in their access to data. It's easy to download data with the exception of a couple of places where there are, the numbers are too small um, so that possibly people would be identifiable. But apart from those two, two districts, every, everything is, is, is available. However, it didn't explain uh, whether statistical methods were used um, because when you download the spreadsheet, in the spreadsheet you find that there are, there are two columns. One is called the lower CI and the other is called the upper CI. 
which means that they're probably confidence intervals. And so, so of course, I wondered why confidence intervals? Where are the confidence intervals coming from? So I asked a question under the Connect tab and then received a reply from uh, Paul Friars explaining a little bit about it and giving some links. So that got me a little bit of the way. So all it said that they were directly standardised rates, but it didn't say exactly what, what they were. Um, before con be 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 before uh, emailing Paul Friars in, in reply and meeting him at a, 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 a conference, uh, I couldn't really work out what was going on. But just to be just to be sure to try and get get the, the map values, I downloaded the boundaries and created them, uh, um, sort of merging local authorities to make the the, the health districts in this way. Uh, the data are copyright and presumably shouldn't be transferred to others, but um, I'm in a different jurisdiction, so I don't think they're coming after me. So that's, that's the file that, that uh, you can download from, from the website. Uh, and uh, I've used it a number of times before, and it's okay. But as you can see, among the, among the names here, we have lower CI, upper CI. We have account. We have the denominator, which is the, the um, uh, age-standardized population. Sex and uh, age are the same. This is both sexes and ages is all uh, uh, up to the age of 75. Uh, if you just take the data from the spreadsheet and you take the take the uh, take the uh, value value was the the, the what they're using. Um, these are the values, and if you then look at uh, counties, which are more more they're not uh, have, uh, urban, very urban. So they have these kinds of values. London boroughs have those. Unitary authorities, those are metropolitan districts, are, are substantially higher. So that looking at the the spread between the uh, upper and lower quartiles, you you, you you can see that there are differences between the types of authorities, and these indeed are the ones you see on the map. However, if you plot the distance between the upper and upper and lower confidence intervals, you can see that there's a relationship to the denominator, to the population size. So that the gap, the distance between the upper and lower confidence intervals is small for large authorities and large for small authorities. So I was wondering perhaps whether they were using um, a, a, an empirical Bayes, Bayesian approach or some other approach like that. It turned out that that wasn't the case, but it, re it required a certain amount of archaeology on the website for, uh, for Public Health England. And in conversation with Paul Fries, he'd mentioned several times their use of funnel plots. And a funnel plot is documented, among other things, in, in Dover and uh, Schopflocher. Uh, where they give a formula for how they balance in the the population size that so you 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 weight the, the 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 spread of your funnel and I'll show you the funnel in a moment um, uh, by by population size. So what we're, what we're doing in these plots is comparing the uh, upper confidence interval from the file and having generated a funnel plot confidence interval and this is doing the same for the lower, so that we're, we've more or less reconstructed, reproduced the analysis which was done by Public Health England. So this is the funnel plot. It's perhaps a little, a little dark for you. These are, these are dark green. These are light green in here. The, the different symbols are for, as you can see, most of the counties are down here. Then you're moving into the London boroughs, which are triangles. They're up through there, but the London brothers ex extend from quite high values to quite low values. The metropolitan districts are largely above the top, uh, the 0.998 confidence interval, and the X's are the unitary authorities, so that they're spread about uh, in most, most of the places. But that's why it's called a, um, a funnel plot. A funnel plot, of course, is the wrong name. It, could, it should be called a vuvuzela. Uh, because that that is actual actual shape, <laughs> but uh, but they call it a funnel plot because they're, they're prob perhaps it was the name was given be before people knew what it actually should be called, and on that basis uh, I then managed more or less this isn't identical to the uh, to the BBC News site map but it's very very close there are one or two uh, authorities which are in the wrong colours this is the one which was published this is the one which results directly from the funnel plot but again personal communication from Paul Friars the politicians when they saw this one 
uh, didn't like these dark green colours, they wanted light green colours. So, so they went with this one, which is the 0.95, rather than uh, using the uh, 0.998 um, funnel plot confidence intervals. So that, that was where it came from. So I reproduced it, I've accessed um, open data, um, health data in spreadsheets, I've accessed uh, ordnance survey geographical boundaries with a copyright sign, but at least they've opened it. That was last year they opened it. And many countries now are beginning to have open boundary data so that you can actually uh, do things. Um, and it's a, it's a case in trying to reproduce something. Now, whether the choices which were made by Public Health England with regard to representing this particular mortality rate uh, are the best choices, or whether perhaps a statistician wouldn't have said, well, we should do empirical bays, or we should, we should uh, use uh, other disease mapping techniques is another matter. The story also seems to be connected to the, to the, uh, the fact that the, well, there were local elections this year, so it was quite useful for the, for, for the government to claim that it was doing good things for districts which were run by, uh, by its... Um, uh, political friends. Of course, uh, if you know the map of England, or if you if you sort of look carefully at this, you'll see that that, or if we zoomed in, uh, you'd see that the uh, that the uh, red areas, the ones with uh, substantially enhanced uh, mortality for the uh, under 75s, they're almost all urban areas. So they're, they're almost all urban areas. The, there are one or two, uh, like uh, Lancashire over here, which are not just urban. And Barry's now wondering where his clock is, but you, you've got plenty of time. And, and there are also questions about whether the colours are the appropriate ones, because the data in, in some of these cases in the, the, the um, um, London boroughs, the, some of the London boroughs have quite small populations, but a county like Lancashire has, has a quite large population, so that it may be that, that there's, there's something there is not playing, playing, playing right. Um, if you wanted to be scary, you'd say that, that uh, well, uh, everybody knows where, where Sellafield is. Sellafield is the nuclear reprocessing plant, and this is about there. But it's, it's not that. Right, Perry? No, it's not that. It could be, it's dark and rainy sometimes. Uh, but it, it, it could be lack of success. Of, no, they have football success there. So it's not lack of success at football. Could be the, the, you, what you mean is all the nuclear power stations down here, they keep people living longer. Yeah. That, that's, what it, that's what it is, yes. So that, that reaching an epidemiological conclusion is really hard. But the motivational example is that we've got open data, open map data, uh, in our case, open source code. Uh, we've got somebody inside the administration who was very sympathetic and answered questions. So that you need lots of things to be in place to be able to reproduce something from the outside, so that without going inside their organization and doing it. But that's where we're one of, one, of, one of the motivations, one of the things that we feel is, is, is positive, that it is possible to get, get some of these things done. So now we'll break for the coffee break. We'll, we'll start again at uh, 11 o'clock. And, uh, and 